Good evening. I'm Minister Louis Armstrong from Louis Armstrong Ministry and Cross Rock Incorporated. I'm bringing you a lecture that is uh, a mind opener. It's going to be short and sweet, but it has revelations in it that it's a must for you to pay attention to. These are the things that you need to know to know what's happening now. I'm going to deal with the things of now. I'm going to take the Bible and open you up to the now. This lecture is entitled, The Forces of Nature Turn on America, 2021-2043. Now you need to focus on this particular timing that this is going to occur, because it's going to occur, you're going to be looking mostly after the year 2019. Out of August of the year 2019. So you got to look at 2020 on until, and you, you, I got up here 2021 to 2043. In that 30 year period of time, in that 30, because some of the years already have went, but in that 30 year period of time, that's going to be from that time of, uh, of the 400 years is over with, whether you look at 360 days. Uh, 365 in that period of time there's calamity is going to happen and God send you a warning to know what's going to happen in this nation I always say this book was sent to the United States of America this book was a Protestant Bible that was sent here so the Protestant reality is in here and that's what King James had those writers to capture that Protestant reality people uh, many talk about going back to the Soterian, et cetera, et cetera. But what you got to do, you got to know wh who sent this book to you. Never lose sight on who sent this book to you. If you're going to look at this book from initiate, you're going to look at it from an author point of view. This book is concerned. You have to check who wrote it. In any book you read, know something about the author. You can't just say, well, God, it's the book of God. This is the book of the initiates. This is a book, as the scriptures say, of, the, of, uh, of truth, the scripture of truth. But to understand the God part of it, it need a man or woman of God to apply their mind to the scripture to bring out the revelation or bring out the thought of God. That's how it becomes the word of God. Through that person, whether it's you, your leader, uh, someone, but they, it's, a, it's very important for that individual to have that anointing and open-minded to the knowledge of what this book is. Don't shut your mind to it, I'm going to teach you whatever I want to teach it and that and that, because you're going to leave your people wrong. And we're trying to teach the people from the spirit of truth. We're trying to teach them the truth is a mother book, and it's very important. Now, let's get into Joshua 24, 12. And I said, and I sent the harlots before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites. And you got to understand this word Amorites. The Amorites are the Americans. You need to put this, this America underneath Amorite, and you will see it very easily. So we have to understand the language. We got to understand the language, Hebrew typology. You must see it. You could go in some of the other lectures before now and you can see how I break that down so you can see that. So the Amorites is the American, but not with thy sword. In other words, your army ain't going to do this. Your army is not going to deliver you. Now, but what he is saying, now understand, not with thy sword, that means you're going to have an army, but the army is not what you're going to use to deliver you. You're going to just have an army to protect you for defense, not offense. So you got to look at it from that. Nor with that boat. Your weapons of war. See, what you got to understand is that God is going to deliver you. God is going to do this. But he wants you to be prepared. So you got to understand that. Be prepared. Be prepared. Now, in Exodus, we're going to look at this. Let's, let's go a little bit more in this. Uh, in Exodus, uh, eight, I mean, 3, 8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, a large land, and it say, and the place of the Amorites. You're going to always see this word Amorite in there because that's a code trying to let you know of the Americans. And you will see me put, and you got A, M, and you got the E, you got the R, you got the I, you skip over that, you got the A. And you got the S. You take this in, you turn that the right way, you're going to get that. 
then the only thing it don't have in here is the sea. So it's trying to tell you, the initiative trying to say, see, see America. So it's very important for you to see these things and know this. Now, in Genesis, Genesis 15, 13 to 16, and shall serve them, and you shall serve them. He's talking to Abraham, talking about to Abel, and you will know this. And understand, you'll see in my other lectures, who Abel is. Abel is not an old man or father 3,000, well, say 2,000 something years, 4,000 something years ago and all that, 3,000 something years ago. This book is written with the initiates putting names to characters that you need to pay attention to. That's what Abraham is all about. That's about your father, your, what, what it is, you fathers, and no one's supposed to be over, over this. Pay attention. Pay attention. That's what the initiate is saying. Pay attention to what's going to happen in your nation. Pay attention to what's going to happen to you. And that's what Abraham is. He's a father. Okay? And shall serve them. Showing you that you should, you should, we shall serve them. Serve them who? The peoples who this Bible was sent to in the nation where the Bible was sent. We're going to serve these people. Okay? Who are what? The Egyptians. Now, I'm going to go through this Egyptian thing real brief after I read the scripture. Now, it's very important. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them. Now, we know we've been afflicted for 400 years. And shall afflict them for 400 years. And also, that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Now, you got to understand, God is the judgment. Judge, judge. That's why he said you won't be using your swords and your and your bows. He said, I'm going to do that. And up here, he tell you that he's going to send nature. The hornets, that mean nature, natural disasters. He's going to send those things necessary to cripple America so America could fall in line with the will of God and deliver free his people that he they have afflicted for 400 years. It's very important. Now, you got to see this. These scriptures got to go and coincide with each other. They got to go with each other. You got to understand that. And say, and judge. And afterward, now afterward, after the 400 years, now you're going to see 430 years, but it's talking in this prophecy, the 400 years. Because the 400 and the 30 years is a separate, the 30 years is a separate time. The 30 years is a time that you got to have the Joshua effect. You got to move it. You can't sit back and say, oh, they don't afflict me. No, it's time to move it. Move forward in this uh, building of this nation, a building of this territory. Joshua went to a territory, territory that God got sought for you. And it says itself. It says, Well, I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, and thy shall go to thy father in peace, and mean thy shall be buried at a good old age. Now, you got to know the possession of the equinoxes over here. You got to know this knowledge to understand what it means by thy will go to thy father in peace, in the age of peace, in the age of Aquarius, and thy shall be buried in a good old age. Now, he said an old age, a good old age. Mean when you do pass away, after you, some of you don't live that 300 some years, that 400 some years, that, that thousand years, after you do decide to give it up and go on, you're going to look like you're 30 and 40 years old. And that's what it means by you will be buried at a good old age. In other words, you're going to look, you know, you're going to decide that that's what you want to do at that time. That's what you want to do. You want to go on to the other side. It ain't because of, of your health and all this other stuff. It's because that's what the spirit will dwell into your heart and your mind at that particular time of human history. But now you got to understand this stuff, and then we're going to move forward in it. Now I'm going to call these names for a minute, then we'll go back. Because I'm going to put them in here. Uh, Larry Austin. Thank you, Larry Austin, uh, and for your letter. Uh, Ted White. Lord Hill. One the Prestus. Prester. Priestess, I'm sorry. One the Priester. William Curtis. Anthonette. Uh, Macmillan, Devin Griffin, Marcia Boyd. I thank you for being there for this organization, and I want to thank many more individuals, and there are many more that's, that's on the different list that you're going to see at various times, but I thank you individuals because I see some names right here in this, this uh, group is some that have, been, have, have braced this organization as well for a while now. So I thank you all, and I don't ever want to be able to do a lecture that I cannot thank the people that God have put here 
to help support this organization and make this organization strong. So my hat is off to you, and like I say, I'm going to recognize you. Now, let's go on because we need to see this. You need to see how these scriptures match together so you can see what's going on at our time. Now, I'm going to go over here, but I want to say something about the Egyptian and understand what did this Egyptian part mean. You got to understand the history. You got to understand that at the time of uh, Alexander the Great, Ptolemy the First was given that territory of Egypt, uh, ancient Egypt, and they created a new Greek Egyptians. And that's where, where we get this name Egypt from. Because the black Egyptians was not the one controlling Egypt at that time. The Grecian uh, became Egyptians and, and they brought you the gods, some rappers and all that. They took uh, Apis and uh, Osiris and they put that together and brought you Serapis. And you got to understand that. You got to study the history. And that picture of Serapis have came down even to our day. And the only change it made when uh, the Pope... Uh, had a portrait of his son uh, being uh, Jesus, okay? But that picture have been, that type of looking picture have been handed down even we have it on our church stained windows today and it's not Jesus and we have praised that Jesus and, and, and God ain't gonna go for it no more. We got to wake up now. We got to wake up. Okay, now Genesis 15, 16 but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet fulfilled. He is going back over again, Americans. See, this book was sent to America. America have done a lot of iniquity to God's chosen people. America have done things that it should not have done, and God ain't satisfied with it, and God committed for a period of time because we was in a dark age period. For 6,000 years, plus years, we was operating in a dark age. And a lot of people don't understand that in the age of Taurus, after Noah time, Noah was in Gemini, but in the age of Taurus, where man uh, age dropped down to 120 years, in the age of Aries, where it dropped down from some say 70 to 80 years, and then in the age of Pisces, and you got to see the procession of the equinox as above, so below, they were back to 120 years, and some people right now live approximately 120 years. But God wants us to go into that thousand year reign. That's why you hear the scripture say you will reign with Christ for a thousand years. That Christ consciousness. And we need to see that. Now in Genesis 15, 16, but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites of the Americans is not yet fulfilled. Now, what is he talking about when you hear that? You need to see this. You need to work the arts to see this. You can't just read the scripture. You got to interpret the scripture and you got to know the arts in order to make this film come alive. And many ministers in the dark age and time past, 20, you mean 10 years ago and all back, or 20 years ago and all back before that, they was dark age preachers. And they didn't know that. So I'm not here downing them or beating on them. I'm just saying that uh, quit teaching the dark age philosophy now. Teach what God wants you to teach now. You in the age of light now. So that's what you need to be, what they done told you. The, a, a, uh, the fullness of the gospel. You've been hearing that for the last hundred years. And that's what we're about right now. The fullness of the gospel. You cannot leave the arts out. The arts is tetrochromatin, The language of God. So you're going to take the language of God out of it? No. You got to put it down now. Now, now what do it mean by in the fourth generation and all this stuff here? You need to see. Because you'll see in the beginning in 1619 1619, this is when they spin that wheel, and you'll see it on the back of your dollar bill over the eagle. When they spin that wheel on you, they, they use the arts. You see the arts on the back of your dollar bill, my people. They use the arts on you. They use the arts to control you for 400 years to fulfill the scripture when in Genesis when they talk about the 400 years. They use the arts to afflict you for 400 years. And no way in the hell were you going to get out of it. Because they knew what they was doing. But them the ones had took the book from you, not let you be able to read for 200 and something years, over 200 and something years. So you didn't know. They took your language from you. They took everything from you. So you didn't know. So you couldn't do research. You couldn't do none of this. Now we can, but then we couldn't. And it took a period of time between when they gave you the book until now to get to that level where we can do research, we can do what we need to do, because we're in the age of light now, and God wants us to know the truth, isn't it? 
So what grandma and great grandmama taught you back then, that was all right for them, but that, that ain't all right for now. And we got to see this now. We got to know what's going on. They spend that wheel for 400 years on you. From 1619, the state of government in the United States. And from there, you had every jubilee, they pass a law on you. Every, every 50 years, they pass a law on you. Every 18,000 days, they pass a law on you. In 1669, you had the slave back. And later you had other slave act, but this is in 1669 you had a slave act. 1718, the French slave in Biloxi. They brought the uh, slaves in Biloxi. 17, 17, this 1718. 1768, you had the Fugitive Slave Act. 1816, you had the, that was the halfway mark then. You had the Enabling Act. That means they didn't want to bring no more slaves into the territory because they were having the uprising, etc. With the Indian slaves that they tried to take the Indian land and enslave the Indians along with the blacks, and they wasn't going for it. They was tired of it. In, in 1865, you had the Emancipation Proclamation and the end of the Civil War at that time. But what they did, they gave you some land, and then Johnson came and took it from you. So they did because God had a, a, God had a ram in the bush for you. He has something sought up for you, and you got to see that. If you deal with uh, sacred geometry in this 1,400 days, I need you to pay attention to this because the arts is necessary now. You cannot lead your people to get them out of that condition unless you work the arts. That's why we've been in this condition for 400 years, because the ministers did not know and how to work the arts and know about the arts. They read across that word, the arts. They'll read cross and don't know what it means. And this is the time where you got to know the fullness of the gospel now. You need to know what these things mean because God wants you to de be delivered from this condition of life. That's why he sent a messenger at a certain time. He sent a prophet to teach you these truths. I've been called by Machesedek, who we know from, from uh, history as thought. And we also know it from history as Hermes. He came to me personally and anointed me and called me in by saying the word, I want you to be just like us. And he came in his priestly attire. So I don't need to bow to anyone and I ain't trying to make myself better than nobody, but I ain't following nobody. I'm following God as I do my job and God behind me and his angels and stuff behind me to do my job. So I'm trying to tell you to pay attention to what I'm teaching you, please. This is very important now. It ain't time for, let's run this way, let's run behind this one, let's run behind T.D. Jakes, let's run behind Clip Old Dollar, let's run behind all the other people. Them people's in the dark age, people. That dark age stuff ain't talking about giving you no nation, what the Bible is talking about. That dark age stuff ain't talking about you building and having your own banking system and your own economy. That dark age stuff ain't talking about you gonna live longevity and all that. See, that dark age stuff ain't talking about that. That dark age stuff ain't talking about that God is gonna give you a land mass and this this land and he's gonna build you to build people's renown. See, that dark age stuff ain't talking about that. That dog is stuff we're talking about. Oh, when you when you get old, tired and rugged and all this, you going to the meet the Lord in the sky, I mean in heaven and all that. See, we all of us gonna do that anyway. So don't we don't need that. We need to know our heaven here, heaven on earth. Okay? Because I remember the scripture say, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And we must never lose sight on that. God wanna build his kingdom here. And we gotta understand that we got a job to do. And I'm a spokesman that come to tell you what God has said, what thought has said. And we need to know this. Now, let's move on now. In the emancipation, we got to understand at the time of the emancipation, if we look at the 144,000 days, and when you see that 144,000 days, you got to understand that because you're going to see it in Revelation where it says the Lamb and the 144,000. They talking about not 144,000 people. It's talking about people in a circumference of time. 144,000. You're talking about in a circumference of time. That means those people inside that 144,000 days, inside that circumference of time. Then a number that no man can number. Because from those individuals are going to come an offspring. Offspring of God's chosen people. And you need to see that and understand the art so you'll know what's going on. Now, after this time here, you had 1915. What is that? The Black Exodus. What was the Black Exodus about? World War I. In World War I, they needed three 
million, they had three million people, European leave and go and fight in World War I, etc. So you had the bow weevil and you had the uh, floods and everything down south and the northern industrial people was telling the blacks to leave that there in south and come on up here and work. Because they needed workers. They needed people in the factory and that's what was happening at the time. And you had the, what we call the Harlem Renaissance and all the other things. Now, then after that, you had the, uh, in 1964, you had the civil rights thing. And we know what the civil rights thing was all about. And you got to see that. What was the civil rights thing was so important about? See, people were thinking it's all about lunch counters and all that. During the time of the, uh, of, of 1910 and 1915, they had the scholars at the major university trying to prove that the Negro was come from apes and monkeys and all this other stuff. See, you don't know the fight that King them was fighting against. They weren't trying to prove that, that if you sell a lunch counter, we should have equal rights. They saying, no, I'm a, I'm a human being, I'm a man. That's what they were telling you, I'm a man. During the time of World War I and stuff like that, when them soldiers were going, they tried to disgrace those soldiers, put them any kind of way, etc. And then the other soldiers, the German soldiers, they'll get them better spots than they do their own men. And, and no, 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 no. So that civil rights thing came about with that World War I and all this stuff coming about. And this is what they were trying to prove. I'm a man. I'm a man. And I want you to treat me like a man. And this is what that, that civil rights movement moved into. And give me my rights. Give me the rights to do that. Because they had done, gave the military a right to integrate, but the regular citizens didn't have a right to integrate. Just like what they're saying right now. They give a right for the, uh, uh, the uh, government to get $15 an hour, but the regular citizen ain't. So this got to be an uh, intimate thing. This thing got to cover the whole thing. Now, we get into that. At the end of that, if you want to go with 365 days, it's 2019. If you want to go with 360 days, it's 2013. That's the end of that 400 years. And what we had in the end of that 400 years in 2019, what, what thing that was passed? The HR 40. The HR 40 was passed. And what was it is? To study reparation. Why? Because you're supposed to come out with great suffering. So God permit that under, under President Trump, he meant, permit that, and the Congress, he permit that to come forth. And the study is going on even now, and we got to understand that. Why is that important? Because you got to understand what they've been doing, what they've been doing to you, and what God is going to do for you. You're going to see that. Now, we're going to go to this board here, and we're going to tell you and show you some things. Now, there's one thing I want to show you before we go to that board. There's something over here I'm going to show you down here. There's something I need to show you right quick down here. It said that in the fourth generation, I don't want to miss that because it's very important, fourth generation. You look at 1619, they go one generation, they go two generations, they go three generations. And in the fourth generation, what did they mean? Because they was talking about Israel. They want to show you something about Israel. In that fourth generation, what do you have? The Rothschilds bought Jerusalem. See, the Rothschilds bought Jerusalem. You got to see where this scripture fit. And what other thing, what other thing happened in that fourth generation? Now, in this fourth generation, it was in 1829, you're at that fourth generation, okay? And you had November. This has started uh, July, August. God fixed it so it would be just right like that. So this prophecy will be known. This is a revelation, my people, and that, that showed that fourth generation at that time. And not only they did that, they tried to ship you back to Libya and all this, some of you back to Libya, when about 80% of you came from America. That wasn't going to work, and it ain't worked today. Yeah, they got a Libya, but that's nothing. See, and you got to see that. And these things are very important. Now, down here, okay, in Exodus, now the sojourn of the children of Israel who dwell in, in Egypt was 430 years. Now you see the 430 years. Now let's deal with that, 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 400 and 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went forth from the land of Egypt. That means you got to have your own territory. You got to have your own territory. And that's what it's saying at the self same day. So what is it talking about? You're looking at the end of that 400 years, if you're going 213, or you want to go 219. You're going to see it right here. It's going to take you right here. Now, where do you get that 30 years from, though? See, they talk about 30 years, and how do you get the 30 years? you got to understand the arcs in this. Now, how do you get the 30 years? We told you that that distance, that distance of time 
is a jubilee. It's 50 years. So how do you get the 30 years to confirm this is you that the word of God is talking about? See, this is what's important. You need to know it's you. Don't tell me some peoples are this and that and you're telling me that, that Israel over there ain't the Israel. You're telling me that those people that they call themselves Jews ain't the chosen people of God is not Israelite. Then prove it with the word of God. Prove it with the arts of God. That's what this is about. See, when you know the word of God and you translate it properly and you've got a spiritual guide that is God with you, you don't have to bow to nobody. Prove it. Deal with it now. You got a jubilee time is 18,000 days. I want you to look at this properly because this is something that you have never seen this type of art work in this region. In that, I need to know where them 30 years come from out of the 18,000 days. What you trying to say to me, God? And God will tell you, take the golden ratio. Everything been made with it. I put it there among your people so you could use it so you will know that that is me talking to humanity. And you need to see this. Take that 18,000 days now and you divide it. 18,000 days divided by the golden ratio. 1.618. It's going to give you 11,128.84 days now. Let's look at it. You take that 11,124.84 days and you divide it with our day count, 364.25 days a year. You're going to get 30.45. If you round that off, 30 years. That's a revelation by God. And we got to see that, people. This ministry is no joke. This is the real deal. Edgar Casey, James Dixon, Madame Baboski, and many other ancient prophets have told you about this time. And you need to know that this is the real deal here. Now, blacks and others have only 22 to 28 years to come out of the United States bondage. God done gave you that, gave, gave you a message you want. And why I say 22, 28, if you go 360 days, prophetic days, you got, you got uh, 22. If you go 365.25, you got 28. So I'm giving you both counts so you can see it in both ways. Now, what is this all about? Genesis 15, 13. Okay? That nation whom they serve will I judge. God done said, I'm going to judge the nation. A judge of America. This book was sent to America. So I'm a judge of America. So what America is under right now? It's under judgment. So why do you think this thing and these conditions is happening right now? Why do you think they're talking about a reset? A uh, uh, norm. You know, you, 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 you got to go with the norm. How it is now instead of how it was now. That's for a period of time, people. God going to deliver his people. Okay? Exodus 3.8. The place of the Amorites, the Americans, is telling you where this is going to take place at and what it's all about. Uh, you got Joshua 24, 12. And I will send the hunters before you, which drove them out from before you. In other words, I'm going to put some natural disasters on America behind. Okay? I'm going to do this. I'm going to break this nation down where this nation going to know that I'm here. It's going to know because my prophet is saying what's going to happen before it happens. And they're going to know that it got to be God. See, God is going to deliver you. You can't deliver yourself. And it ain't about your righteousness. It ain't about how right you is. You are some of the stiff-necked people that have been on the planet. It's harder for you to get together than any other people. And God loves you and he's going to deliver you anyway. Because he know what's coming out of you. It's some children that are coming out of your loins. It's going to be ones that are going to be ruling the whole world. And he know that. So that's what he see. He foresee what's in you. And what's going to come out of you. In spite of your ways. Let's deal with that now. We've got a little short period of time on this now. And thy shall go to thy fathers in peace. What do we mean by that? As you go to thy fathers in peace. You done went all the way from North time and went all the way around to this. Okay? Now you're at the age of, of peace, the age of, of, of Aquarius. So you're going to go to thy fathers in peace. That means you're going to go and live a long life in this age of Aquarius. Just like Noah had a thousand year uh, a lifespan, good life, you're going to have the same thing up here. As above, so below. As below, so above. These are the things that you need to see in the procession of the equinox. You need to see this. 
And you understand as you come, serious come, because we started down here after Noah. Everything dropped. You came, and I hope y'all can see this. You came, this was dark. This was a serve, uh, serious was far away from you. Now it's coming close to you. And that means it has 24 times the brilliance of our sun. So it's going to add to our sun, and it's going to give you longevity. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. Now, we're looking at this. Okay. That was the end of that lecture. I made sure I was short and sweet with it. But we need y'all to send the donations. Thank you, uh, one of the brothers. I don't know if you want to call his name. I'm going to call your name anyway. Then you just got to write me and tell me, don't be calling my name, but I'm going to call you. Uh, Larry Austin, you closed that book deal out. That way that book, that last payment, or last $500 of that book, you made sure that I knew that, hey, look, let's don't talk about that book no more and what it is. Let's talk about this other stuff. And we need 470K in advertisement for this year. And we need to get this to the next level because if you look at our videos, as we said from that video, The Great Exodus and Fall of America, they throw that algorithm out there. So we got to do the things necessary to go around all of that so we could get this stuff done. So we need to focus on that. Now, but we need to send your, your funds, send your donations to Louis Armstrong Ministry, 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, and Cross Rock Incorporated. On, you can go on PayPal at uh, PayPal, okay. I did something. I wrote PayPal twice, but that's all right. When you go to Cross Rock, we got GiveLify. You flip to another video and you'll see on Cross Rock, we have GiveLify under the mobile app. So remember that, GiveLify under the mobile app, and that way you can send donations. It's under charitable. Cross Rock Incorporated under charitable. And on your mobile app with Give Lafay, and you can send a donation that way, or you can go to PayPal, Armstrong Lewis J at gmail.com. That's PayPal at Armstrong Lewis J at gmail.com. I'm gonna say a prayer, and I want you to understand that we're trying to narrow this down to a certain amount of minutes now, so we could get on other sites. So we need to keep it from an hour, hour and a half, or hour down to 28 to no more than 30 minutes. So that's what we're doing now. But I'm trying to give you yet all that I could give you working the three boards in order so you can lose, uh, know what's going on. So a lot of my little audience and shouting is not gonna be in this as much for a while. Heavenly Father, thank you for this audience. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to come before your chosen people. Father, you have shown me from all of this that I've been going through, that you love these people. You love the whole world, but you have put a certain spot in your heart for these suffering people that have suffered for generation to generation through child slavery, through Jim Crowism, and even today. Heavenly Father, I know and realize that there's other peoples other than the ADOSs that have been through certain things. But I'm trying to reach the ADOSs so they could be made whole. And through that, the rest of humanity become whole as you have so desired. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you have done. And we give your thought to thought so we can attain righteousness in our life. Thank you, God the Almighty, Allah. Thank you, the Lord.